Overclockers, my name's Bryony and in this Overclockers Academy video, I'm going to tell you how to make the most of your OLED monitor with some advice before you buy, set up tips and tricks and help with long-term maintenance. We're also giving you the chance to win your very own. You can enter to win this exact monitor here after you've watched this video by clicking the link in the description below. I absolutely love giving you guys freebies when we can, so please make sure to like this video and subscribe so I have some more bargaining power with management to do more of these giveaways in the future. Or, you know, subscribe because you just love our videos. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's kick things off by discussing some of the pros and cons of an OLED monitor. This will hopefully help you decide whether this awesome tech is suitable for your setup, your budget, and your lifestyle. OLED monitors are made from OLEDs, organic light emitting diodes, instead of traditional liquid crystals. Each pixel is self-lit, removing the need for a separate backlight, and this is why they are known for their incredible image quality, fast response time, high refresh rate, and HDR performance. They offer far better viewing angles, meaning your view won't be obstructed by poor lighting, and OLED panels have the best contrast ratio and dynamic range available, with absolutely near infinite black levels thanks to their ability to switch on and off individual LEDs. They're also way thinner and consume less power than other monitors. This creates a rich and immersive gaming experience that will almost certainly make you go wow when you use one for the first time. However, OLED monitors do have some drawbacks. They are more expensive and more fragile than other panel technologies. There's also the risk of burn-in, which is when static objects on screen, such as the taskbar or game HUD, leave a permanent trace on the screen. OLED panels also have a shorter lifespan than other panels because they use organic materials that degrade over time. This is greatly accelerated by certain environmental factors. However, they are expected to last around 5 to 10 years when you look after them. Finally, OLED panels may consume more power than other panels when they're displaying mostly white images, which are commonplace when you're browsing the web or busy working. Ultimately, the pros and cons of an OLED monitor do depend on your personal preferences and also your budget. Thankfully, a lot of those negatives that I've mentioned can be mitigated by a good manufacturer's warranty, so do check to see if the monitor that you're looking at has a separate warranty for the OLED display. Overall, if you want the best possible image quality, contrast and responsiveness, and you don't mind paying that premium price, then an OLED monitor will almost certainly be worth it for you. Once you've picked out one of the many wonderful OLED monitors available, it's time to get things set up. And I'm going to demonstrate on the very popular LG UltraGear 27GR95QEB. First, set up the stand following the manufacturer's instructions and place the monitor on your desk. You'll want to consider the positioning of your monitor, as UV light can be very damaging, so try to keep it far away from windows or daylight. OLEDs are also more sensitive to heat and moisture, so keep it away from any source of these, such as radiators or pet enclosures. Now, it might be tempting to leave your cable management neat and untouched, but you'll want to make sure you use the cables that are included with your new monitor, not the existing cables you might be using to connect your display to your GPU. This is to guarantee that your monitor will be able to run at the advertised resolution and refresh rate with no compatibility issues or weird glitches from an older or unsupported cable. Now that your monitor is connected to your PC via the GPU, not the motherboard, 
and remember to set up your monitor's resolution to its native default screen resolution in your OS. You can do this in Windows by right-clicking on the desktop and selecting Display Settings. You can also enable HDR if your new display supports it, change the refresh rate and adjust the scale. It's worth checking the website of your monitor's manufacturer for any important firmware updates or software downloads. OLED monitors are still relatively new technology and you might occasionally encounter some bugs that can easily be fixed with a firmware update to help stabilize the settings and improve the overall performance. There might also be some free calibration software available and this is a great way to ensure that you get the best picture quality and overall experience. For example, LG has the Calibration Studio software. You can also watch some YouTube tutorials to learn the optimal calibration settings to use and get the best visuals from your particular model of OLED monitor. Take this opportunity to familiarize yourself with your monitor's display controls. You can access these by using the buttons on the bottom or the joystick on the monitor itself or by using the remote control if it comes with one. You will find you can adjust settings such as the brightness, contrast, color temperature, gamma, and color mode. During setup is when you will also want to enable all of the available burn-in protections that exist on your monitor. For example, if you have an LG OLED monitor, you can use the sleep timer, screensaver, pixel shift, pixel cleaning, and all these different features help to prevent or reduce burn-in. Finally, once your monitor is all set up and you begin using it, you might notice something called VRR flicker. This is often part of gaming on an OLED display and it can appear as flickering in dark shadows while you're gaming with VRR, variable refresh rate enabled. To reduce this effect and prevent flicker, try capping the frame rate to your 1% lows in games where the frame rates fluctuate wildly. Now, I briefly mentioned burn-in prevention during the setup process, but it's such an important part of owning an OLED monitor that I think it deserves its own chapter. Here's some of the steps you can take in order to prevent burn-in and take all of that worry away from owning an OLED display. You'll want to turn the monitor off when it's not in use. This is a simple but effective way to avoid unnecessary exposure to static images. If you're a tad forgetful, ensure you're using sensible energy saving settings. For example, a sleep timer or screensaver. These features will turn off or change the image on your monitor after a period of inactivity, preventing static elements from staying on the screen for too long. Within your OS, make sure to hide your taskbar. You can do this by right-clicking and selecting taskbar settings, then behaviors. The permanent presence of a taskbar will over a long period of time cause a visible burn-in. In the monitor's setting menu, reduce the brightness to the 45 to 50% range. This will lower the stress on the pixels and help to prolong their life. This should be plenty bright enough if your monitor is situated in the correct location away from direct sunlight. Exposing the screen to sunlight and UV rays will cause rapid degradation, so try to keep your blinds closed and your monitor away from windows. We all know gamers hate sunlight anyway. I mentioned it previously, but just to emphasize, most OLED monitors will have at least one built-in feature that prevents burn-in. So while you're in the settings menu, make sure to enable anything like pixel shift. This is a feature that some OLED monitors have that moves the image slightly every few minutes so that none of the pixels are exposed to the same content for too long. 
Finally, if you notice your OLED display might be showing signs of visible burning, you can play a color changing video, or if you have an LG monitor, use the built-in pixel refresh. This is a method that can fix existing burning or prevent it from happening. You can find videos online that cycle through different colors and patterns, and they refresh your monitor's pixels and reduce the visibility of burning. Thanks for watching another Overclockers Academy video. I hope that this video takes away some of that worry of owning an OLED monitor. They are an awesome new technology and I think the benefits vastly outweigh the negatives if you do take some time to set them up properly and learn the steps that you can take to help prolong their life. I know an OLED monitor is now definitely on my wish list. If you've got any more questions, I'm gonna do my best to answer them in the comments below, so please ask away. Remember to enter that giveaway to win this monitor for yourself. And of course, give us a big thumbs up, consider subscribing to catch our upcoming videos, and I'll see you again in the next one.